everybody, Aaron here. We're back out in the shop and today we've got a small milling job that I think will make life a lot nicer here in the shop. So you may recognize these, some of you probably even have something very similar. These are plastic mill table guards and there's nothing really wrong with them. Uh, they do the job, I think. Um, they they're, uh, have lips on both sides, so they do kind of stay on the table really nicely. The problem with these is they are for like a 36 inch mill table, so old school Bridgeport size. And my table is 49 inches long, so these are too short. There's a, a you know, four inch gap on either side of the vise, or if I butt it up against the edge of the vise, you know, chips still get down down uh, between the, the edge of the vise and the uh, trays here. So I think we're gonna just try an experimentation here with um, a different kind of material and making some custom fit for my table. The other thing you may notice is I finally have a sticker board up. This is just a piece of PVC that um, I think looks pretty good for displaying stickers. So if you have a, a shop sticker and you wanna send it to me, let me know and I will uh, give you a mailing address to send it to. So for our project today, we are gonna use a fancy kind of laminate. So this is G9 melamine glass fiber reinforced plastic. So it's kind of a fancy fiberglass type stuff. Um, it is very heat resistant and it's nice and smooth. So cleaning it off should be pretty easy. It's you know filled with glass, so it's not the greatest to machine in terms of tool wear and stuff like that. But obviously we're not we're not cutting very much. So um, because of the size, this piece is 24 by 12. Um, it's not going to be you know chuck it in the vise and easy does it on machining it. So we've got to think a little bit outside the box on our setup. And then what we'll do is uh, basically cut to width here. And then we'll figure out what the pattern is on the side of the vise so that this will kind of match that. And uh, then we'll cut that on this end. And then um, to get it to stay in place, it's gonna sit there fairly good, I think, but uh, I do want it to be, um, you know, not easily knocked around. So I think what we'll do is just take some pieces of aluminum uh, rectangle bar and just glue them on the bottom side that uh, will fit down into the T-slots. And I think that'll keep it more than secure enough. Um, and then, you know, these get worn out or whatever. I don't have many dollars in them. It's gonna be far more time than the money aspect. So if I hate them, you know, not the end of the world. But let's go over to the sharp mill and we'll get started on setting up to uh, basically rip this thing, uh, cut off about three inches. Got the mill table cleared. Don't have the uh, vise in place. So I think the best way to hold this and keep it as rigid as possible is to uh, just put it directly down on the mill table and we will make our cut to where the cutter can go down in the T-slot. Lots of different ways you could do this. This one seemed like the most, um, I don't know, I guess the easiest to do as well as allowing us the most rigidity and not having this uh, flex around too much. Another option I thought of was to do the double tape, the double sided tape method, um, or even just the um, powder coating tape with super glue to, uh, you know, layer in there. But I think this, this works out just fine. Um, so what we'll do is we need to have obviously some clamping pressure across this thing. We couldn't just use the, the toe clamps to clamp on the edges. That would probably lead to a lot of vibration. So, went into the materials cabinet over there and I've got a piece of, I don't know what size that is, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, something like that. Square tube, heavy wall. So we will clamp down on either end of that and put a couple of shims in the middle just so it's got a little bit more force pressing down over here. And then I think our tool should stick out long enough to clear this just fine in this position. And then on this end, I've got a uh, piece of wide flat bar that we'll do the same thing with. Okay. 
The cutter we're going to use is a 3 16 end mill. This is a three flute uh, ZRN coated carbide end mill. I chose it just because this stuff is kind of close to like how aluminum would cut and it's in terms of its hardness. This stuff is obviously just going to turn to powder when you're machining it, but it's obviously not, you know, it's not super hard. Um, and then the coating will hopefully help with some of the abrasiveness and it's just in a little side lock holder. It's probably unnecessary, but I do have a respirator and this stuff makes, turns itself into powder, just like breathing drywall dust or whatever else, except it's probably a lot sharper. So why not? I think um, I'll go ahead and turn the vacuum on after I get a, a shot of what it does just kind of in regular, uh, you know, so you see how it reacts and then we'll turn the vacuum on so that it kind of contains some of the mess. Went ahead and just quick trammed the vise in so that it's pretty close to being in the exact right position. It's centered this way on the table. And then all we're gonna do, even though this is kind of janky, is we will just trace on the edge like so. So it's more of a carpentry way to do it, but it is gonna work out just fine, I think. So that guy will fit on there pretty nicely, I think. Now we'll do the other side and then we'll figure out how we're gonna cut them. I think we're basically gonna do the same thing that we did before for the first cut. And just lay this guy directly on the table, overhang just a little bit on the back. And drop it down to the table. I think for this, we're just gonna kind of freehand it. I'm hoping that this is pretty much square so I can essentially just rip all the way across and then we can do these little details in the scoops. It'll just be kind of like a uh, milling machine maze puzzle. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm not gonna spend the rest of the day trying to get it perfect. Got the vise back on the table and uh, indicated in. Let's grab our new covers, see how they're gonna work. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. That one will work as well. Yeah, looks okay, doesn't it? I think what we'll do is go ahead and 
put these guys to use right now and we'll machine a little, a uh, couple of blocks of aluminum. In my drawer of stock, I found a couple of pieces of three quarter inch square um, 6061. I think that'll probably be enough. I imagine if I just put, um, put, put one of these on each tray on the center T-slot, that's probably enough. I mean, I just don't want it flopping around. It doesn't have to be super, super secure in there. And if I need to, what I can do down the road is just counter bore um, a hole or two and then just glue a magnet in there and that'll keep it even more secure. Till today, I've never actually used this tool. It's got like uh, TPG triangle inserts. I think somebody gave it to me, but I can't remember. Maybe my buddy that um, isn't a machinist. But the first cut looked like it went okay, so. Got our little blocks done. Um, this one fits in there nice. It's not too tight, but it is in there. Not gonna have a whole lot of wiggle room. So what we've done is uh, marked off on the bottom of the cover where that location is for the block to be. And in order to get this to adhere real well, I think we need to rough up that surface just to give something for the epoxy to, to grab onto. I'm just going to use a little die grinder with a uh, maroon wheel on it. Try and do this without blocking the camera. Should be enough. Just gives it a little bit of a rough surface. And then the epoxy we're going to use, um, I like the convenience of these little double bubble packets. Um, this is from Hardman, I guess is the brand. Oops, is that even focused? Yeah, so anyway, these are something I use forever. In my days working at a uh, golf store, doing a lot of one and two golf repairs, golf club repairs. So this stuff is pretty handy for just uh, when you need a small amount of epoxy and the pack is disposable. So you're not having to deal with clogged tips or anything like that. So quick working time. So this will be fully set and usable Then I just got a little bit on the cover so that it would uh, already be a little bit wet. So sit in place and then I'm just gonna tap down on the cover so that it mates up with that little block. We'll just let that cure for a minute or two and then we'll pull it out and put it on the bench so it'll it'll cure um, out of the T-slot just in case there's a little bit of extra epoxy. I don't want this thing to become a nightmare to remove if, uh, if the epoxy squeezed out too much. It's been a couple of minutes. I usually keep the mixing board around with the popsicle stick, so it's still a bit pliable, but pretty well cured. I 
on there pretty good. We've got the other one done back here and we are finished. Got a right and a left. Yeah, I think that's gonna work out just right. There we go. I think they turned out pretty well. Uh, we'll see how they hold up in use and if there's anything annoying about them that I don't see happening. I think the uh, chips hitting them are not gonna be too tingy if that's the reason I didn't wanna just use sheet metal. And these things are, this uh, material is supposed to hold up to a whole bunch of different kinds of chemicals and heat. So hopefully when chips land on it, they're not hot enough to uh, melt the surface and kind of etch it. But we'll see what happens. These uh, pieces of material were not expensive at all. So if I hate them, then they can go in the scrap uh, scrap pile and I'm not gonna worry about it, but I think I'm gonna like them just uh, being able to keep the T-slots a little bit cleaner. And when I do wanna take the vise off, I can take it off and I don't have to spend the next 30 minutes cleaning the T-slots just so I can get all of my clamps and uh, nuts put in there. But uh, yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thanks for checking out the channel and I will be back with some more good stuff very soon. Thanks a lot.